Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. It's the grand finale of the Charity Cup. Jan Krzysztof Duda won the second set. So that meant the players went into a tiebreak. Carlsen won the first blitz game and this is the second blitz game of course. Duda playing white now in a must win situation to take it into an Armageddon game. Let's see if he managed it. It's a Karo Khan. Slight surprise that Carlsen plays a Karo but it just shows he has such a breadth of knowledge in the openings. And here Duda wanted to play something different, uh, something non-standard to perhaps, you know, take Carlsen out of his knowledge. So he played F3, which, well, it can be quite a dangerous system. Carlsen wasn't going to be tempted into taking on E4. He played E6, super solid. And after Knight C3, he didn't even play Bishop B4, which is, well, quite well known. Um, reasonable way to play. Instead, he played Knight F6. And now we transpose into a classical French position. Uh, Carlson actually had played the French earlier in the tournament against Hare Krishna. So again, that's an, just another opening that he's comfortable with. Now, knight e2. So this goes into the so-called Steinitz variation against the classical. So you can see that white builds up this enormous center. And if white can maintain that, then black will just be really badly squashed. And then white can turn to the attack. So let's see how Carlson tries to deal with that. So very often you see a quick b5, b4 in these systems, but interesting that Carlson just goes for Castle's kingside instead. And here Duda, well, it's a blitz game. He went for the, perhaps the most aggressive move and that's pawn to h4. You can try and bolster the center, but he went for the aggressive move and Carlson played f6. So he's looking to break open the f-file. Sometimes you can even sacrifice an exchange here. Again, bishop e3 is possible to bolster d4, but Duda played a move which has been reasonably popular, and that's a3, covering the b4 square, but perhaps preparing to break with b4. So that's why a5 was played. And here I remember an absolutely fantastic game that Ivanchuk played with black. His opponent played knight g1, an exchange of pawns, queen b6, bishop d3, and watch what Chucky did next. He just sacked a piece. And this is very typical for this variation. You know, you break down white center, this frees black's pieces, the bishop can now come into the game, and the king is stuck in the middle. Ivanchuk had fantastic compensation for the piece and indeed won very quickly. Now bear that in mind and let's see what happened in this game. So Duda played knight g3. He's preparing to bring his bishop out. Remember, he's in a must-win situation. Carlsen played queen b6 just as Ivanchuk did. Bishop d3. Well, there is so much pressure on the centre that by this stage there is no backing down for white. Pawn takes pawn. And here well, it's even possible to take this one. Let's just see. I mean, this is a very interesting Greek gift sacrifice. This wasn't played. Let's see why not. Knight g5 check. Now be careful, don't take that. That'll open the h file but instead king g8, queen h5, threatening mate, be careful, f takes, h takes. So mate is on the cards with g6 and queen h8. But now that is a very strong move, a really nice counter sacrifice. Uh, and it means that if g6 
then that can be taken. And danger is averted. Let's just show that here. Knight takes, queen takes, and black should survive that one. After all, black is a piece up there. Okay, so after this, what did Duda do? He played knight g5 instead. It's a blitz game. He's absolutely going for it. Black has to be very careful. If pawn takes knight, then you can take h takes g5 check. It's really brutal. King g8, g6. And, well, the, th the threat is obvious. I mean, it could be queen h5 or it could be that classic rook sacrifice and queen h7. So knight g5, a very scary move, but Magnus reacted very well. He played h6, which did force white to take on e6, so this is still really scary. But now Carlsen sacked the knight. So just think of that Ivanchuk game where I just showed you that little snippet from it. This counter-sacrifice, um, or this breaking out sacrifice, is so common in this variation. You break down white centre and it just liberates black's pieces. And the king, which did seem secure in the middle of the board behind that great pawn chain, is now in trouble. So if pawn takes, then bishop takes. So knight takes rook. Knight takes bishop check, and bishop takes knight. So after that little flurry of exchanges, in fact, white is the exchange up. However, black has a pawn for it, very active pieces, and the king is a huge problem. If we could somehow tuck the king away here, h2, well, it would be a help. But it's hard for the king to get to safety when there's this huge discovered check. So bishop d2, bishop g4, it's not getting better for white. Cutting across the king. I mean here, maybe the best chance is to try and keep things closed with c4, but even then, there's so much pressure. Two bishops, pawn for the exchange, there's pressure here. Unpleasant. But do to play queen g6. That's a kind of lunge, hoping that something will turn up. But queen takes is very strong, because in this position, black has rook e8 check. What a great move. If that's taken, then queen takes rook check. And it's black that breaks through. So king f1, queen takes bishop, queen takes rook. And now black's queen broke through to the king. Queen takes, rook takes b7. And here's the final move, knight e5. Everything just hangs together. Here, Duda resigned. Why did he resign? Okay, well, the knight covers f7, prevents the counterattack. And now you can see that these pieces are just the wrong end of the board, and the king has no shelter. So, for example, pawn takes d4. And now it's forced mate. I'm sure you can see it. Check here, there, and queen f2. Wow, what a counterattack! Starting with that move h6, pushing the knight in, and knight takes e5. This typical sacrifice in this variation of the French where the pawn chains get locked together. So that was victory for Carlsen. So he won both blitz games, he won the tie break, and he was the winner, or is the winner, of the Charity Cup 2022. This was a great event to be for me to be involved in. It was really nice to be commentator, and particularly as uh, it was linked with such a good cause, cause because funds were being raised for UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, to help children in Ukraine. So it all felt, uh, well, it was great fun and, yeah, very worthwhile as well. Hope you enjoyed that. More reports coming your way soon. Remember, the FIDE Grand Prix is taking, the final FIDE Grand Prix is taking place in Berlin. And then we'll know 
who has qualified for the candidates. See you later.